Hello students, in this video we'll prove the Schwartz pick inequality. So the Schwartz pick inequality is a very useful inequality in hyperbolic geometry. And it's going to follow from, of course, the Schwartz lemma, right? So suppose f maps d into the closure of d is holomorphic. In other words, those are just sure functions. Okay. And fix a w in the disk. Okay. Good. Um, and so now what? And so now, <clears throat> then, then the modulus of f of z minus f of w over 1 minus f of w bar f of z. This quantity over here is no more than the modulus of z minus w over 1 minus w bar z like that. Okay, that's the schwartz pick inequality. And now also note that if I let z approach w, so what's going to happen over here, as z approaches w, as z tends to w, right? Then what do we get? Then we get this beautiful we get this beautiful inequality for the derivative, right? And so what's that going to give me? That's going to give me, well, let's think about this. So this divided by this is going to give me the derivative. So on the one side of the equation, we're going to have an f prime of z less than or equal to. Well, I'll put this denominator now over there. And as z goes to w, this is going to be f modulus of f squared. So this is 1 minus modulus of f of, uh, I want w now, so not z. So this is going to be a w. Doesn't matter, but we can just, either way works, right? f of w, okay. Modulus of f of w squared over 1 minus modulus of w squared. And oftentimes you're going to see it written in this more compact way, which is more sort of explanatory, right? You're going to see it written as f prime of w over modulus, of course, 1 minus modulus f of w squared. That should really hint at the hyperbolic metric, right? less than or equal to 1 over 1 minus modulus of w squared. Beautiful, okay? That's the Schwartz-Pick uh, theorem. And so how do you prove this theorem? So here's the proof. So proof. Okie doke. So let's consider, if you're taking a complex analysis qualifying exam or a complex analysis exam, this is bound to pop up at least one question, right? It's a typical question on the Schwartz lemma, right? Consider, g of z, remember w is fixed now, right, is equal to what? Now, to make sure I get my order correctly, b of what? b of f of a, b of f of w, composed with f, composed with b of w of z. Well, of course, what's b here? So, of course, where bw of z is just our Blaschke factor, right? It's just going to be z, it's going to be w minus z, w minus z over 1 minus w bar z is our Blaschke factor. Of course, we know these Blaschke factors are conformal automorphisms of the disk, right? Okay, and so now let's, uh, here's the one thing we have to check. So clearly, this maps d to d, this maps d to d, and this maps d to d. Let's find out what g of 0 is, right? So g of 0 is going to be what? So g of 0 is going to be b f w of f of what? Of b w of zero. Now, what is b w of zero? b w of zero is just going to be w. Beautiful. So this is going to be what? This is going to be b f w composed with f of um, w, of course. And so um, of f of w. And this is going to be what? This is going to be f of w minus f of w all divided by what? All divided by one minus f of w bar f of w. Right? Excellent. And that's zero. Okay? So what do we have now? We have g maps the disk to the disk and g of zero is zero. So we can apply the Schwartz lemma. So apply the Schwartz lemma. To G. If we do so, what will we get? If we do this, we're gonna have that the modulus of G of Z is less than or equal to the modulus of Z. Okay? How does that help us? Now I have to unwind the definitions over here, right? So let me write this up pedantically. What this says is this says that B F omega of F of B 
omega z, parenthesis, 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 is less than or equal to the modulus of z. Okay? Now, the cool thing I'm going to do over here is I note, note, that b w inverse is the same thing as b w. These Blaschke frogs are their own inverse. That's why I put the w first, right? We've proven that, pre we proved that in the video on Blaschke factors, right? So these are their own inverses, and these are both their conformal homomorphisms. So the mass of this to the disk, right? So I can choose my z over here. I can choose z to be equal to b w inverse, or just b w of what? I'm going to choose z tilde to be this over here of z. Okay. Now, of course, this is equivalent to what? This is equivalent to saying that bw z tilde is equal to z, right? So what will this tell me over here? So now what that tells me is that with this, with this choice of z tilde, and of course z tilde is one-to-one -one mapping of the disk, right? Good. So now this is b, f, and then f of what? f of b, so z is b tilde of w, right? So that I'm going to put a b tilde inside there. They're going to cancel out. We have f of b, uh, z tilde is less than or equal to what? Is less than or equal to b w of z tilde, like that, okay? And now z tilde is an arbitrary point of the disk, so z tilde, the side of z tilde, uh, completely fully at the disk, right? Fully at the disk. With this choice. Okay, perfect. In other words, all the, every single point in the unit, uh, in the unit disk is able to form z tilde, right? So now I just rewrite what this says, right? So what is this over here? This is really, I'm just going to replace z tilde with z now, right? So this says f modulus f of what? f of w minus f of z over 1 minus f of w bar f of z is less than or equal to modulus of w minus z over 1 minus w bar z. Now, of course, I have the, I have the numerators in here flipped, but I can pull out a negative sign and it works, right? So that gives me the proof of the what? That gives me a proof of the schwartz pick lemma. Now, one comment. The comment is the following. So it turns out that we're going to later look at these things over here. So there's just a quick comment, and that is the following. If I look at the tangent inverse, if I look at, um, let's call this row of z and w, which is the hyperbolic tangent inverse of the modulus of what? Of w minus z over 1 minus w bar z, like that. Well, this is this expression over here, okay? Well, this expression is actually the metric, the distance function between two points in the disk with respect to the hyperbolic the Poincaré hyperbolic uh, metric on the, on the unit disk, right? And so what the Schwarz-Pick lemma says geometrically is it says, oh, well, what that is is that says the, ta and the tank inverse is an increasing function. So the tank inverse of this side of the equation is less than or equal to the tank inverse of this side of the equation, which says that holomorphic functions of the Schur class take the, uh, they call it sometimes pseudo-hyperbolic distance. They take the pseudo-hyperbolic distance on the unit disk and shrink it and make it smaller. So these holomorphic functions are contractions of the pseudo-hyperbolic metric, which is a very useful property in understanding geometric properties of the disk with uh, the Poincaré model of hyperbolic geometry via the unit disk, which we'll discuss in further videos. Thank you very much.